Hello, thank you for joining us today and welcome to the Oklahoma Virtual Transfer College Fair. We have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct a question to a particular school by including their name in your question, or you can direct a question for all of our representatives to answer and share more information about. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this has been just one of many different sessions that have happened, so we hope you've been enjoying them. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. In addition, you'll find the rest of the programming available for you to watch as well. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters today. We're here in session C3, and so our first school will be the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Hello everyone, thank you all uh, for joining us today. I'm excited to go ahead and tell you a little bit more about Nebraska really briefly. My name is Jessica Mascote and I am the college rep for the University of Nebraska Lincoln. So here I am providing you all with my information in case you all decide to um, go ahead and reach out to me. I am the DFW uh, Texas recruiter, but I also handle all of uh, Oklahoma. So definitely reach out if you have any questions. So a couple of just fun facts about the university. Uh, we are located um, we are located in Lincoln, Nebraska. As you can see here, we have roughly close to uh, 25,000 uh, students. We have over 150 plus majors on our campus. Um, a third of our students are out of state. So definitely uh, look into us in because you guys are from Oklahoma, I can definitely work with you all with um, any assistance that you need. But overall with Nebraska, as I mentioned, uh, Nebraska is the flagship university in the state of Nebraska. And we're also considered to be the top university in the state. So um, we are a part of the Big Ten Conference, but yet we're the second smallest within the Big Ten, which means you will get to experience research, academic and athletic opportunities while attending a medium sized university. Um, as mentioned before, we do offer 150 majors ranging from architecture, business, engineering, arts and sciences, uh, journalism, uh, the list can go on. Um, so that's definitely one of our key majors is engineering. Um, I will say when students do apply to Nebraska, you're automatically admitted to the university. However, uh, engineering, fine and performing arts as well as architecture, those programs do have additional admission requirements. Awesome. So overall, our admissions uh, process is unique, and I'm going to go over that really briefly. Um, but I did want to mention that we are test optional uh, for admission and scholarships. So meaning if you do happen to have a test score, definitely submit those to us. We will go ahead and take those into consideration. However, if you do not, or for some reason it was canceled, um, we're going to be looking into your GPA, your overall GPA. So if you have more questions about that, like always, you can reach out to me. Um, but we do have a fast turnaround with the application process. So within 24 to 48 hours, you will receive an admissions decision uh, from Nebraska. Um, what we're looking into is our uh, core, your core course requirements as well as performance requirements. So if you meet at least one of these following performance requirements, um, you would be meeting our assured admissions alongside with those core course requirements. So have a 20 in the ACT, um, have a or have a 3.0 cumulative uh, high school GPA. How, what, and I mentioned this just because I know, let's just say this is your first semester um, at a community college or at a different university and you decide to transfer uh, to Nebraska. If you have anything less than 24 credit hours earned, we will look into your high school GPA. So just wanted to go ahead and uh, give clarification on that. Um, as well as anything, if you do have over 24 credit credit hours earned, uh, we are looking at least for a 2.7 GPA as a transfer student. Um, so if you have questions regarding that, please reach out to me. Um, and as mentioned, I always like to give students information about the core courses. You can look it up here or on our website as well. 
And of course, with the value of Nebraska, we are the most affordable ones within the Big Ten Conference. So I highly recommend for students to look into us. Um, of course, when we're looking into scholarship purposes, we're looking, our scholarships are merit-based, so we are looking into those test scores, GPA, so forth. However, we also have our college and departmental scholarships. So for example, if you're deciding to attend Nebraska for one of our engineering programs, such as our uh, electrical engineering or, or civil engineering, um, just because you'd meet the admission requirements for the university, you still have to meet those admission requirements for the college. Once you're admitted to the college um, for the College of Engineering, they're also gonna look into your um, application and then award you based off of what they have um, coming from the college. We also have honors programs. Uh, if you are interested in applying to the honors programs, we have three different uh, programs overall. We have the general honors programs, which is open to any major. We have our Jeffrey S. Rates, uh, which is our computer science and management um, honors program. And then we also have our honors business academy. So those, if you anybody is interested, please reach out to me. I can uh, help you with that. Awesome. And then, of course, I just wanted to go ahead and provide you with information regarding those merit-based scholarships, what they're awarded based off of, and how uh, much we award students. So our top two scholarships that I always uh, tell students is our George Beadle and then also our Ruth Leverton scholarships. Those are our big ones to look at. And then regarding our, the scholarship deadlines, the scholarship deadline is February 1st. Our merit-based awards are awarded May 1st. Um, and it all depends on what semester you are trying to come in. So if you're trying to come in for the following uh, year, fall 2021, that scholarship deadline is still May 1st. However, if you're looking into coming for spring semester, uh, that deadline is slowly approaching. It's actually next month. Um, so you can reach out to me to uh, provide you with that information. And I know I'm running out of time here, so I'm just gonna go briefly over the important dates to kind of keep in mind if you wanna take a screenshot. Uh, look at this. Of course, FAFSA is already opened. And um, if you would like to visit campus, definitely check out our website. We also have um, 101 tours with student ambassadors. So you can visit campus uh, virtually from the comfort of your home. Um, so that if that's something that you're interested, definitely um, register for those. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it and thank you. Thank you, Jessica, so much for sharing about the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. Our next school will be Oklahoma Panhandle State University. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Wood. I am the admissions counselor at Oklahoma Panhandle State University. And I'm getting ready to share this PowerPoint with you. There we go. I thought it would be fun to start with a little drone video of what our campus looks like. And now that you've seen what we have to offer campus-wise, I want to just tell you a little bit more about us. We have about 1,500 students at OPSU, which gives us a 14 to 1 student to faculty ratio and an average class size of just 16. Those smaller numbers allow for a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your professors and a lot of hands-on learning experiences that you might not get at a larger university. We're the fastest growing university in our region, which is 250 miles in all directions. That includes bigger schools like West Texas A&M. We have alumni in 26 countries in all 50 states, which means from OPSU, you truly can go anywhere. Just tell us where you wanna go and we'll get you there. And we're the first and only Hispanic serving institution in Oklahoma. What that means is at least 25% of our student body is Hispanic. This year's numbers have came out and we're at 29%, which I think is amazing. We're a very diverse campus. Our men's soccer team alone represents over 20 countries. And we offer four and a half million in scholarships each year to help students afford college. We have three academic colleges at OPSU, the College of Ag Science and Nursing, the College of Business and Technology, and the College of Arts and Education. One of my favorite things about the College of Ag Science and Nursing is there are actually three facilities in addition to your labs and classrooms where you can get hands-on learning experiences. The university and farm, the university farm and greenhouse, sorry, offer um, hands-on opportunities for crops, 
learning and crop production, as well as animal sciences. And then we have a meat lab. We're one of two meat labs in the state run by students where you can learn meat sciences, buy fresh meats, or just a great on-campus job if you're interested. The College of Business and Technology offers two nationally recognized clubs, and the College of Arts and Education offers what we like to call the Panhandle Promise, which is an education scholarship. If you teach in the Panhandle for two years after graduating from us, it's a full ride. A little bit more about our costs. If you look up in the corner, you can see an average semester. So we're very affordable. We don't charge any out-of-state tuition and almost 90% of our students get some type of financial aid. We also have 250 scholarships in addition to that four and a half million I mentioned earlier that just have a checklist application. Just mark the ones you qualify for that you're interested in and we'll let you know if you qualify, if you got it, anything like that. It's a super easy application process. It's not like other schools where you write an essay or anything like that. Athletic scholarships are made by different coaches. So if you're interested, I'd be happy to get you their contact information. Those scholarships can help cover your classes, your dorms. And we have scholarships starting um, at a 26 ACT score and a 3.0 GPA. Um, go ahead and submit your ACT, SAT scores if you've taken those. If not, don't worry, we're test score optional this year. We have four on-campus housing options, two traditional dormitories, and we do require freshmen to live on campus. The Aggie apartments and the Aggie annexes open up for juniors and seniors. The apartments have four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living area, and a kitchenette. The annexes have two bedrooms, one's a little bit bigger, so two people share that one. Full kitchen, full bath, full living area. They're duplex style housing. We compete in 16 different athletics and we're getting track soon, so that'll make 17. Um, almost all of our athletic facilities have been redone or are being redone right now. So if you're interested in any, um, I encourage a virtual tour. You can reach out to me to set that up or go online or come see us in person. If you feel safe and comfortable doing that, we are doing in-person tours and just check out our athletic facilities because they're all very nice. Student life is still very active despite COVID. Um, everything is free with your student ID. Some of my favorite things to do include movie nights in the theater, or we just had inflatables and like free food in the courtyard. That was really fun. We have 42 clubs and organizations on campus, which is huge for how small our campus is. And if we don't have something that you're interested in, we'd be happy to get it going. Just find an advisor and a couple of friends and we'll start the group. We also have the Noble Activity Center. It has a heated saltwater junior Olympic size pool, basketball courts, volleyball courts, all kinds of fitness equipment, um, conference center. And we host all kinds of events in there like scuba diving classes, self-defense classes, and all of that is free to you with your student ID. If anything I said sounded interesting today, these are the steps you're going to want to take to apply. Our application is free and right now we're giving away free t-shirts to the class of 2025. So just send in that application. It doesn't hurt to get that free shirt. Then activate your student portal, apply for financial aid, apply for housing and set up a payment plan. Here's my contact information if you have any more questions after. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing more with us about Oklahoma Panhandle State University. Our next school will be John Brown University. Hey guys, so my name is Samantha and I am from John Brown University. Um, I am the admissions counselor that works with students from Oklahoma. Um, and John Brown University is a private interdenominational Christian university in Northwest Arkansas. Um, we're about an hour and 15 minutes from the Tulsa area and about three hours from the Oklahoma City area. Um, while you guys are listening, I would love it if you put in the chat maybe some reasons you're thinking about transferring. Um, I know that's super unique to every student, but I'm just curious um, what has led you guys to this webinar today. So um, let me tell you a little bit about JBU. Um, our educational philosophy is head, heart, hand, and for us that really represents a holistic education. Um, our founder, John Brown, he was a radio evangelist, and he said that if you fail to educate the whole person, then you really have failed to educate them. Um, and so for us, that's why a holistic education is so important. Um, so let me unpack that. Um, of course, head is kind of what we all think of when we think of college. Um, we're going to learn, after all. 
Um, at JBU, that happens through professors who really care about you and who know your name. Uh, we have about 1,300 undergraduate students. Our student to faculty ratio is about 13 to 1 this year, and our average class size is about 20 to 25. Um, and then when you're in your upper division um, major classes, those classes get even smaller. So it's pretty common for professors to know not only your name, but also your major and maybe what you want to do after you graduate so that they can support you best on your learning um, endeavors. We have over 50 majors and 50 minors. So if you want to study it, there's a good chance that you can study it with us. Uh, and because we are a smaller liberal arts school, there's also some ability for students to kind of um, create their own degree plan if we have something really close, but not quite what you're looking for. Uh, and then finally, yeah, we have Samantha? several. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt real quick, but we're getting um, some static and it kind of keeps kind of making like some scratching sounds. I thought I didn't know if you wanted if something else was on or if you want to just turn on and off your mic and maybe start and try to see if that helps. Thanks for telling me. Let me try headphones. Let's see if that helps. Okay. And don't worry, I paused your time. So you'll be able to pick right up and still get your six minutes. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yes, that's better. Okay. I wonder if it was the fan on my surface. <laughs> I think I've had that happen to you. So, all right. Thanks for letting me interrupt and um, keep on going. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we have several four plus one programs where actually you can get your master's degree in five years. Um, so usually along with your bachelor's. So usually you do four years bachelor's, two years master's, um, but these four year four plus one programs let you get both in five years, which of course saves you a year, which then saves you money as well. So, um, here are our top majors. Nursing is number one, uh, then psychology, kinesiology, engineering, biology. A lot of students that study that do um, like our pre-med track and we have an 85% success rate of students getting into a health professional school their first year after JBU, uh, which is really high if you know anything about the MCAT pass rate. Um, we also have family and human services and graphic design as top majors. Uh, and then we have several new majors that we started this last year. Um, and so that would be computer science, criminal justice, cybersecurity, data analytics, which is a new field in the business area, and visual effects. So as an interdenominational Christian university, it's really important to JBU that you have lots of opportunities to grow and develop spiritually and relationally. Uh, that happens, of course, through chapel. There are also small groups that students can join, um, retreats that you can go on, mission trips that you can be a part of. Uh, but there are also a lot of ministries that you can join to serve the community, whether it's um, mentoring or tutoring kids from rural Oklahoma that's like literally one mile from our campus, uh, some of the poorest counties in the U.S., um, or going and spending time with refugees in northwest Arkansas. We have several populations that have been resettled really close to our campus. Uh, and then there's also, of course, tons of fun things to do on campus. We are a residential campus at our core. Uh, so we ask that students stay on campus their first three years or until they're 22. Um, so as a transfer student, there may be some wiggle room for that with you, but honestly, a lot of our transfer students still stay on campus until they meet that age requirement. Um, just because when else do you get to live and learn with your very best friends for four years? So, um, and then of course there's the clubs and we are uh, division one in AIA uh, and members of the SAC for athletics as well. So. And then finally, hand, I feel like this is where JVU really stands out compared to other schools, because I don't know that other schools emphasize hands-on learning as much as we do. Um, so of course that's in the classroom. It's pretty rare you're gonna be sitting there listening uh, to a lecture the whole class. Instead, you're gonna be up and doing things with your hands, working with other students on projects or um, assignments. And then we also have internships for every single major on campus and our professors are really well connected with professionals both in the Northwest Arkansas area and honestly all over the world. Um, so if you really wanna go have your internship um, in Russia or wherever it is that you're passionate about, um, our professors can help you make that happen. Um, and then finally, we have academic clubs for every division on campus. So if you want to dig deeper into what you're learning about, um, these clubs actually are student run, so um, you get to decide what you learn about and talk about in those clubs. So as a transfer student, we kind of have two categories. I think another admissions counselor touched on this. If you have 24 or more completed hours, we will consider you a transfer student. In that case, all we need is an official transcript from your current university, um, and then we can review your application for acceptance. If you have less than 24 completed credit hours, then you would um, technically be considered a first-time freshman, even though we know you're actually transferring. 
Um, so in that case, we actually are going to look at your high school GPA and then you can decide if you would like to do the traditional route where we look at your test score um, or the test optional route where we do not need an ACT or SAT score from you. And the good news is all three routes have um, academic scholarships. So you can see those there. Thanks, Jen. Um, so you can find yourself on the chart and see what scholarship you'd get. So um, next steps, I'd love for you guys to apply. You can see my contact info there. If you have questions, screenshot this um, and reach out to me later. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you, Samantha, for sharing more about John Brown University. Um, for everyone watching, unfortunately, William Woods University was not able to um, be present with us today. So uh, we will now be hearing from Southwestern College. Thank you, Rodney, for being ready to go and take it away. Hey, good morning I, or afternoon. I'm Rodney Worsham from Southwestern College. I want to let you know we're at the Southwestern in Kansas. We are just right over the Oklahoma border. So for any Oklahoma watchers, we are not the Southwestern in Weatherford, Oklahoma. We are the Southwestern College in Winfield, Kansas. So just about 45 minutes north of Ponca City, Oklahoma, or an hour and a half north straight up Highway 77 from Stillwater. So we, we are a great institution for transfer students. And I really just wanna talk with you and not hit you with 50 million stats about Southwestern, but just, just talk with you about some options for you as a transfer student. Some of you might be the transfer student that you've lived at home and you've taken a few part-time classes online. We would be a great uh, transfer institution for you not overwhelming at all. We have about 600 students at Southwestern and our teacher to student ratio is 12 to one. And so if you've never had that campus experience and you're not even for sure you want that, um, it, coming in as a transfer student, uh, being placed in the upper level courses, you would still definitely get that one-on-one -on -one individual attention. So we're not an OU or an OSU or a KU type institution of thousands of students you could transfer in and be a big fish in a small pond with about 600 students. Uh, my niece uh, went to Murray State in Murray, Oklahoma, and had lived at home and taken classes part-time and worked and was an adult learner and was really nervous about transferring. And she transferred to Southwestern College, majored in philosophy and religion, got one-on-one -on -one personal attention from her instructors, and was accepted to OU Law School, which is the top a law school in the nation and she credits all of that uh, to Southwestern College. So if that's the type of transfer student you are, we would be a great option for you where you want to complete your degree, you know you're going to have to move away, but you're not necessarily interested in Greek life or thousands of students uh, at the institution. The other type of transfer student that you might be is you're very involved at your community college. You're living on campus, you're an ambassador, you're involved in student activities or student government, and you'd like to continue that. Uh, I would really encourage you to apply and visit our campus. We are open, we are active, we are safe. All of our students, professors, administration have been COVID tests. We are wearing masks, we're doing social distancing. So the best way to find out if Southwestern College is right for you is to come and visit. I would encourage you to try to visit before Thanksgiving break as our students and faculty will be leaving for the semester and then not returning until the spring semester starting in January. We do offer academic scholarships to transfer students and those would be based solely on your GPA from your community college or college that you're transferring from. We have some of the highest transfer scholarships. So sometimes people say, oh, if you didn't come in right as a freshman, you don't get a lot of good scholarships. I would tell you that if you have a, above a 3.3, you would be looking at an $11,000 academic scholarship. And that can also be stacked on top of a discipleship activity grant or a music activity grant, theater activity grant, or we are in the NAI Division II, KCAC, so we compete with about 16 other um, smaller colleges in Kansas. So if you're interested in sports or athletic training, uh, communications, radio and TV, you could receive an activity scholarship on top of your academic scholarship. If you happen to be a member of Phi Theta Kappa, we would even add an additional $2,000 on top of your $11,000 academic scholarship. 
We also offer church matching scholarships. We're affiliated with United Methodist Church, but we have students here of all different denominations. Chapel is every Wednesday at 11 o'clock and several hundred students have been attending as chapel has been outside. If your church or family's church or grandma's church would award you $1,000 to go to Southwestern, we would match that and we would award you $1,000. I, the other reason I want you to apply and visit this semester is next semester, we will have a full tuition scholarship competition for transfer students only. One student will win a full tuition scholarship for the next two years at Southwestern. It covers the entire cost of your tuition. Even if you don't win that scholarship, you would receive an additional $1,000 just for competing for the scholarship. So definitely, whether Southwestern is your first choice or you've never heard of us until today, you definitely want to apply, have your college transcript sent, and we can accept you off of a student copy right now. You don't have to pay parchment or pay for an official transcript. Just go online to beabuilder.com, hit on the transfer option. We'll waive your application fee the month of October, and then email us or fax a copy of your, of your college transcript. You, you need a 2.0 or above to be accepted to Southwestern College. And again, starting with a 3.3, you would be looking at an $11,000 a year academic scholarship. We are the only college in the region that offers marine biology as a major, and we have recent graduates that are working at SeaWorld right now. Students spend their first uh, years on the Southwestern College campus, and then your final semester, you would be at Oregon State graduating with a Bachelor's of Science from Southwestern in Marine Biology. We also issue brand new Surface Pro Dell laptops to every one of our incoming students, freshmen and transfer. So don't buy a laptop or don't buy the laptop when you're about to leave the community college because you will receive one at Southwestern as part of your enrollment process. As a transfer student, there's lots of options of living on campus or off campus, lots of apartments. So you're not, we have no community bathrooms, you wouldn't be in the freshman residential halls. So you could still have your privacy of feeling like an adult learner, having an apartment, but still at the convenience and safety of being on campus. So again, I would just really encourage you, whether you are an online learner living at home or you are, tr or a traditional transfer student and you're super involved at your college and wanna to continue to come and visit and apply to Southwestern College in Winfield. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rodney, for sharing more about Southwestern. Um, I would love to have our other presenters return and come back on camera, come back as a whole group, everybody. Um, and to help our uh, attendees and viewers get to know each of your campuses a little bit more um, and about the student experience there, we'll go in the order that you presented. Could you each share a uh, tradition or event, something that a transfer student might be excited to learn about um, and participate in if they joined your campus. Uh, Jessica, take it away. Hi everyone. Yes, of course. Um, we do um, a tradition that we do at least the first weekend. Uh, the, the first weekend before classes start is to encourage students who attend our big red welcome. So pretty much they'll go through our tunnel walk to get into the stadium. Um, have pretty much everybody come to the center of the stadium, uh, form a big inn for Nebraska. Um, of course, for this upcoming year, we won't be able to do anything like that uh, for, the, for freshmen or for any of our transfer students as well when they're doing their orientation um, on campus. But then we also have what's called free uh, free swag Sunday. So that's another tradition that um, a lot of students, both freshmen, transfer students come out, um, get some free swag from Nebraska, as well as some free snow cones, ice cream. Um, it's a big event to also include other student organizations, get to learn more about campus, what we offer. Um, so, yeah. Sarah, you can go ahead for Oklahoma Panhandle. Um, one of my favorite on-campus events is something that's actually coming up right now. Every year, one of the old dormitories gets turned into a haunted house. We call it Dorm of Doom, and it is entirely run by our Student Government Association. Every club picks a different set of rooms that they decorate. So sometimes there's clowns, sometimes there's like 
hanging meat from the meat lab that I mentioned earlier. It's really interesting to see what the students come up with, but it's a super fun thing to do to just get in the Halloween spirit. It gives you more things to do on campus. It's a great way to hang out with your friends. Um, just a really fun event. And we're doing it this year with COVID. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I love this question because it lets you see the uh, personality of each school. So JBU has this really fun tradition. Actually, it's called the toilet paper game. Um, it happens at our first men's home basketball game each year. Uh, this year, basketball season, of course, is in the spring for the NAIA. Um, and with COVID and the toilet paper shortages we had in the spring, I don't know what it'll look like. But anyway, the toilet paper game. So after the first live basket, um, so not like a technical foul shot, but like a live basket that JBU makes, um, we toilet paper the court. And it's just a super fun moment when like everything that you see is white and there's just toilet paper everywhere. Um, and we get a technical foul for it every single year. Uh, students then swarm the court and clean it up and we're all done in like three minutes. Uh, ESPN has covered us several times. We've been rated the best technical foul in the U.S., which is so fun. Um, Charmin Ultra has also sponsored us, and we have partnered with them. So, like, if a student brings a can of food, um, Charmin gives them a roll of toilet paper, and then that can of food gets donated to a homeless shelter or food pantry in the area. Um, and if you saw the recent ESPN commercial from this summer, the one that's like sports bring us together, um, we are at the very end of that commercial. So, super fun. I think you can go ahead. Okay, if I can show my screen again. So you can see at the top of the video, um, I've been at Southwestern for 27 years. And when I first toured the campus, I thought be beautiful facilities, lots of trees, friendly people, awesome technology. But what is it with this pile of rocks right here? And that is how we got the name Southwestern College Mound Builders. There's a pit on our campus over 50 feet deep and for over a hundred years there it is right there the football team basketball team music team discipleship team everyone goes out into the community and they find a rock and they paint that rock and then we have what's called the building of the mound or the mound building ceremony and so everyone takes their rock and they throw it into the pit and that is the symbolism of what it means to be a mound builder which is on your own you can't really do a lot but when we all work together in trying times, we can build something amazing. And so that's how we got the name Southwestern College Mound Builder. So you'll never go on another college campus and see this giant pile of rocks. A couple years ago, US News and World Report did the 100 most unusual mascots in the United States. And SC with our rocks was number 32 in the nation. Now I feel like everyone after this presentation is probably going to go Google that list, right? <laughs> and Samantha's right. It's a great question because it definitely gets to share a little bit. Um, since we have a couple more minutes, I decided to throw out one more question. If everyone wants to share, um, Ravi might be like, oh, I just used my fun or unique fact. But what is a fun or unique fact about your school that's really interesting um, that you don't normally get to share in an admissions presentation, but um, is just one of those really cool fun facts? And we'll just do that quickly before we wrap it up. So we'll go in the same order again. So Jessica, thank you for being our first. Uh, every time I appreciate it. So fun fact about our university, something that we don't get to share. Um, I would say we actually have an underground ball, uh, bowling alley um, on campus. I never knew about it until this year. So that was something surprising. Um, it used to be uh, where our students the ones that were part of the bowling teams would be able to have access to it. Right now, obviously it's not accessible, but we still have that underground bowling alley. So fun fact, I guess. <laughs> uh, we actually have a museum on our campus that's named after our area. It's called the No Man's Land Museum and we have signs that say No Man's Land all over. Um, so that's really unique. It's all about the history of the school, the history of the area. It's just something fun and super educational in our area. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what to share for this. I think uh, something that's really cool about JBU is that we started as a fully work study school. Our founder, he didn't have the opportunity to go to college, but he was really passionate about education. Um, 
So originally students would work kind of like College of the Ozarks about 20 hours a week and then their education was paid for. Um, we had a furniture factory and a dress factory um, and as well as like a fully operational farm. Um, but if you go into our cathedral, all of the benches that are in there were made by our students um, earlier in like the maybe early to mid 1900s. So super fun. So the gentleman who invented Colgate toothpaste is a graduate of Southwestern College. Uh, again, we're located in Winfield and the character, not the actress, the character of Marianne from Gilligan's Island is from Winfield, Kansas. Uh, the gentleman who played Buddy in the basketball movie Hoosiers uh, is a graduate of Southwestern. And uh, until recently, we had a Crayola factory here in Winfield. So all of your crayons, when you were a kid and you got the new crayon box and it smelled so good and all the colors were in order, that would have come from Winfield, Kansas. Oh, that's so awesome. It's so great to learn a little bit more about each school and place and um, just give a little bit more of that character. It's always fun to know. Well, um, I just wanna say thank you right now to all of our um, presenters for sharing about their school. Um, not just the facts, but your passion and energy. I hope that all of our attendees, um, if you didn't ask questions today or anyone who's watching this after, please follow up and um, head to the websites, contact these representatives to learn more about how you could become a part of their institution. Um, so thank you to everyone for attending and watching. When you uh, leave today, you will go to a short four question survey. It's very quick and we appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this has been one of many sessions that was being hosted as part of the Oklahoma Virtual College Fair and Virtual Transfer College Fair. So we hope that in about a week, you will be able to head over to um, the website where you register to find this recording, as well as recordings of all of our other sessions to watch again or to learn more. We wanna thank everyone again for joining us today. Thank you and goodbye.